This is I'll Be With You in Apple Blossom Time, page 131. And this tutorial is focused on learning the left hand jump bass accompaniment, which you will be using with the right hand conducting a pattern in three, as well as using your voice to sing the lyrics. So this is a three part assignment. Once you get the left hand jump bass down, you also have to get in the right hand conducting in three, along with singing the words with your voice. So feel free to pause this video at any point to work on things that we have just presented. And at the end, I'll give you a full version of what it should sound like. So for the left hand, it's important to choose a chord position that's going to allow you to focus on a position that you're always coming back to, or a core position. And I'd like to start with this C chord in first inversion. I think this works really well for this song. So E in the bottom, G and C. So that chord is going to be used for two measures. We're not going to change it. We're always going to be jumping up to that chord. In the third measure, we change to an E minor chord, which is very easy to reach from there. It's just in root position. So we have gone from the C chord we started with to the E minor just by a half step adjustment of our thumb. We're going to keep that for those two measures. When we get to the F major 7, remember a major 7 is considering F as the key that we're building that 7th in. So we're going to need an E as that 7th, not a diatonic E flat, but E natural. So we've already got E here in this chord. We can simply adjust this upper third down. You probably want to make your fingering work a little bit easier, but this is what I would recommend for those two measures of F major 7. This is followed by return to C, which again we'll go back to this core hand position. The C sharp diminished will have a C sharp in your bass on beat 1, but remember these chords we're talking about are all placed on beats 2 and 3. So in that case, on beat one, you will have your C sharp here. And coming up back to this core position, we're going to just adjust that thumb again, this time a whole step down to B flat. So we have E, G, and B flat. Take a moment just to review those chords. Again, from the top, it's C. C, G, E from the top on down. E minor adjusts a half step with the thumb. The F major 7 is going to keep the E here in the root. And we're going to move this third down. So we have this. And then we're back to and the C sharp diminished 7. From there, the chord gets even smaller. We're going on to the next line. This is measure 9. So there is a common tone there between the C sharp diminished 7. It's the G in the middle. And the G stays in the middle for this chord, as you can see. We'll use this for the next measure as well, which brings us back to measure 11. There's our starting chord again. It's a very simple adjustment once again for our A7 chord. We're going to take this C and make it a C sharp. So I've kept the bottom two E and G. And remember again, here's our bass, which will be on beat one. Then in the following measure of the D7, this is measure 13, we're going from this chord. There's really nothing we can have in common between these two chords. We're going to use this on the top and an F sharp on the bottom. This will last us for one more measure yet before we get to the quick exchange of chords in the last two measures here. So for this G chord in measure 15, I want to get back as close as possible to that original C position chord that we had, which was this. So I'm going to keep this and I'm going to use the second inversion G chord. 
Because these move in very quick succession, we won't have time to put any other single note for a bass note. We're just going to move these chords quickly, beat by beat. So we're going to keep that G in the middle for the A minor 7, and then the A sharp diminished, which will take us up to our final measure. So once again, those last two measures, it's really important to remember to keep the G in the middle. And I'm using both hands to show you this. Now let me show you in one hand version, which you will need to do because your right hand will be conducting. So this is measure 15. Just adjust it to a C sharp. And now you might ask, since I'm playing this chord on the downbeat, you need to fill the other two beats. So I would suggest inverting the art of traditional pattern and you're going to go down for beat 2 to G and then walk it up on beat 3 which would reach C on the following measure. Take a moment and just try to play through each of those chords in that chord position utilizing any common tones as much as possible and when you come back I will show you how to insert the root of each chord on the downbeat. Okay, so we're back. We're going to take those core chord positions and now we're going to be putting the root of the chords on the downbeat. And in measures where there are, are two measures together that use the same chord, we're going to use the fifth on the following downbeat. So let me explain. The first two measures of the piece have the C chord. So for the first measure, I will use this C as the bass on the downbeat. The next measure, I'll use the fifth as the bass on the downbeat. So in measure three with the E minor chord, I'll use the E as the downbeat, our root. And then on measure four, since we're still on an E chord, to, get, to vary it up, I will use the fifth of E on the downbeat, and so on. So now I will play for you um, how this left hand will look with all of the chords and all of the basses. One, two, three, one, ready, go. One, two, three, one, ready, go.